thanks ever so much for coming in. Thank Tell us a little me. bit about uh, this research that you've been involved with. Well, really the focus of the research was looking at if you reintroduce a species somewhere, you know, more generally, um, you can do so for two or at least two reasons. You can do so because you want to conserve that species and you want a viable population of that species, or you can do so because you want that species to do something within the landscape. So what we were doing with the study was we were looking at this idea, which has gained a lot of traction in recent years, of reintroducing wolves to a fenced enclosure or to a fixed enclosure in Scotland, in the Scottish Highlands, um, and trying to understand whether they would do one or, or both of those two things, whether we'd be able to maintain a sustainable population of wolves um, and whether they'd have any effect upon the larger ecosystem. Because there is an issue potentially in, in Scotland about uh, proliferation of, of red deer. Is that something that potentially will be tackled if you reintroduce wolves? That's exactly right. There are a lot of red deer in Scotland. They used to have a lot of natural predators like wolves, but also bear and lynx and so forth. Um, and we don't have those anymore. So there's a huge, um, hugely high density of deer in Scotland. And that has knock on effects on native woodland and reduces the quality of native woodland and so forth. So what the wolves we think would do was they'd help reduce those deer numbers to a level where it's a more kind of natural ecosystem, if you like. But this isn't reintroducing into the wild as such. It is within an enclosure. How different is that to just reintroducing wolves into the landscape? Well, that's exactly the thing we wanted to test here, because obviously it's very different having wolves in a fence reserve than having them run wild. But the thing we wanted to study was whether by having the, the fences around the reserve, you'd actually end up with a higher wolf density than you would if they were just left open, and whether that would be actually a more natural system, because in the wild they're always going to have some kind of natural barrier eventually. Um, so actually that was what we were trying to test. Now, the big problem obviously with introducing wolves to Scotland is that you have to think about the people that live in Scotland. So it's not just as easy as just putting them back in. And that's another argument for having a fenced reserve rather than just letting them loose back into, into the country. Because there's all those social issues to consider. Absolutely, farmers are a good example of people who might be very angry if we were to release wolves that's into right. the wild. But there are other places, say in Europe, that have just released wolves into, or the wolves have sort of appeared in the wild. That's right, I would say they've appeared more than being reintroduced. So for a long time wolves were pushed back into um, furthest eastern parts of Europe. Um, but since there's been a lot of recent land abandonment, a lot of people moving to the cities and so forth, a lot of land has opened up and wolves have started to spread back across the continent by themselves. So from Russia and Finland and through into the Scandinavia and now right through across central and actually western Europe as well. But obviously they can't get to the UK because of the channel. So. And they are, they are quite dangerous wolves, they're, they're predators. And what could the dangers be of reintroducing them to England? Well, this is, a big, this is a big question about whether they're dangerous or not. And obviously you do hear stories where um, people come into conflict with wolves. But um, at the end of the day, the reason that, that we have to the domestic dog is because wolves you know, can be managed. <laughs> you know, they're not, and they don't attack people nearly as much as, as I think a lot of people think they do. Um, actually, if you look back on the records of wolf attacks in Europe, it tends to be wolves that were kind of raised as domestic wolves and then released back into the wild that are the ones that have no fear of humans and then attack them. So actually there's a lot less of a problem with wolves being dangerous than you might think. Well, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much.